As many of you must be aware by now, the famous app across the world known as TikTok is getting banned across the USA. India has already banned the famous app within its country, and the US seems to be following suit. The reason for this, of course, is the belief that TikTok is selling user information to the Chinese government. Over, is TikTok the only app to divulge such sensitive information? The basis for the ban of TikTok is hypocritical for many reasons. If anything, it is just a trend followed by every big tech, social media, slash internet platform. Your personal data is a valuable commodity. In fact, there are companies out there that are solely designed to take the data you willingly put out on the internet for free, extrapolate it, and then sell to other entities. These entities include companies, nations, academic scholars, hackers, law enforcement, and many more. To say that TikTok is any different is simply naive. They are simply capitalizing on the data that you give away for free in order, to, in order to turn profits. While unethical and a breach of privacy, it's the reality of the world we live in. In fact, Facebook in 2018 gave Huawei and other Chinese companies access to user data, yet are still up and running as though nothing ever happened. Granted, Facebook never directly gave China access to its data, but another article posted by CNBC said that the Chinese government could take data from any of its companies founded in China, specifically Huawei as being noted. Facebook has essentially done the same thing that TikTok has done. This is one of many examples of companies selling your data that you either knowingly or unknowingly give to companies. Next to no regulations exist for companies that want to sell personal data to other individuals in the US. As a result, it has become incredibly profitable, but also a huge breach of privacy. Nowadays, anything posted on the internet, whether it be private messages, emails, texts, etc., can be tracked and stored by big companies. However, it's not only companies that are watching what you do online. Governments have been doing the same thing for some time now. For example, Edward Snowden, one of the most famous whistleblowers in America, had disclosed information that the NSA was spying and storing personal communications of people both inside and outside the US. The US, along with its partners including the British, German, and Israeli spy agencies, not only have spied on people without given a warrant, but also carried out political and industrial espionage. An example, although many exist, includes the bugging of UN buildings' private quarters. What's worse is, none of this was decided by the elected legislative body in the US, let alone the people which it was spying on. Yet here we are, complaining about how China might be spying on us? It's quite hypocritical if you ask me. Granted, since the expose, law surrounding the collection data from the NSA has been reduced, but that was only because of the fact that they were completely exposed by Edward Snowden that any action was taken at all. While still wanted by the country, he did his civic duty as an upstanding citizen to the people of America. While the NSA has been spying on people unlawfully, the US government isn't much better. During the aftermath of 9-11, the Bush administration passed the Patriot Act. The Patriot Act, in theory, was made to deter further terrorist acts in the country along with other legal activities such as money laundering. However, its ex execution was very haphazard leading to much more privacy issues in the world. For example, an NSL can be issued by the FBI without a judge's approval to allow someone to check bank accounts, text messages, phone records, etc. These NSLs are not required to be detected and instead are kept and stored. The effectiveness of NSLs is to be questioned as well, since from a collection of NSLs from 2003 to 2006, of the 192,499 NSLs issued, only one led to a terror-related conviction. It seems that the creation of the Patriot Act had more to do with the invasion of privacy rather than the actual detection of terrorists. Interesting, many people see our lack of privacy being eerily similar to the book known as 1984. 1984, a book published by George Orwell, was created in 1949 to demonstrate what would happen if a totalitarian government censored and controlled all media. Through the use of Big Brother, every action taken by the people is carefully watched and recorded. It was a book that was a warning for what life would be like under a communist regime. 
Eerily, his predictions would come to match the reality of communism very closely. However, it soon became a book that many people used to refer to the current day. Specifically, the surveillance state known as Big Brother. With Edward Snowden's declassification of the NSA's dealings, along with the Patriot Act, is it really hard to see how we may be living the world that Orwell had predicted would occur? It is for that reason why 1984 is still very relevant in today's society. Our privacy will soon be a thing of the past as we become more and more reliant on technology. With technology comes the power to record behaviors as we have seen with big corporations and personal data. It's because of that fact we need to heed the warnings of George Orwell before our society turns into Oceania, a state where everything is manipulated by the government and we have no privacy whatsoever. The idea that TikTok is selling your private information to the Chinese government is nothing new. In fact, many companies and governments have been doing this for much longer. The hypocrisy by the US government banning TikTok when the government itself has done such acts is quite detestable. I believe that the ban of TikTok should be a conversation on privacy laws for all things rather than simply one app because it won't change the fact that we may be heading towards the world Orwell had predicted. As Edward Snowden puts it so eloquently, arguing that you don't care about privacy laws because you have nothing to hide is like saying you don't care about free speech because you have nothing to say. Before I go, I have a few updates that I would like to pass along. I've recently started a new podcast known as the Converser Freestyle at Lie, as well as a blog known as Mindscape. If you enjoy the type of content I make here, then you're sure to enjoy what I make on my other platforms. Links for my blog and podcast will be in the description if you feel like checking them out. Thanks again for the support on my channel. See you guys next time.